We will now dive into our third plenary session, and I um, am delighted to, um, that, to welcome our first speaker, Professor Corinna Hawkes, who is from the Centre for Food Policy, University of London, and she will talk about how to drive systems change. And this third session, while you come up, welcome, Corinna, uh, has the title Transformations on the Ground, Policy Participation. And we will look into the toolbox of policy interventions to create the right incentives for adopting more appropriate practices aimed at system change. Welcome. And you have the clicker there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for that introduction. It's amazing to be talking in such a fantastic room. Um, great to be here. Um, thank you. Uh, to talk about these important issues. And I'm very grateful for the Uppsala Health Summit for taking on this issue of food systems, which is so important. And what I want to talk about today is how to do things a bit differently. It's clear from what we've heard that we need to do things differently. And I'm going to present five approaches, five toolboxes, if you like, of how we can do things differently, five different ways of thinking about doing things differently in policy and participation as a particular focus. And to do that, I'd like to tell a story. I'd like to tell the story of the food system. The food system had one main aim in life. The aim of the food system was to produce as much food as cheaply as possible, as competitively as possible, and make money for the people who controlled that food system. As the food system liked to say, calories and cash. The food system was tremendously proud of this. Think of all of that food flying around the world. Products like wheat and soybeans and corn could be produced in the places where it could be produced most efficiently and then exported elsewhere so they could buy foods more cheaply. This was fantastic for economic growth for those countries. It was fantastic for the companies involved. It produced byproducts for lots and lots of animals to eat, lots and lots of them. It produced ingredients that manufacturers could use to create all kinds of fancy ultra-processed foods that people seem to love. Yes, the food system was very proud indeed. But then something started to happen. The food system started to feel unwell. The muscles of the food system started to weaken. The amount of energy the poor food system had started to decline. The resources that it had to make sure that enough food could be produced started to dwindle. And the weather started to do all of these crazy things that made it more difficult to produce food. The food system became sick. So the food system went to the doctor it was quite an unusual doctor, and said to the doctor, what's wrong? And the doctor said, you're exhausted. You need to take a few years off to regenerate yourself. Otherwise, it's only going to get worse. And the food system said, but I can't do that. I need to feed people. If I don't produce food, even more people will go hungry. People will die. I can't afford to take time off to regenerate. And then the food system said to the doctor, and besides, I'm proud of what I do. I work hard. What I do means that people don't go hungry. And what I do means that people are really healthy. I'm so proud that I stopped the world going hungry and I help the world be healthy by producing all of that calories and all of that cash. And the doctor looked hard at the food system 
and said, look, I'm sorry to break this to you, but you've been working really hard to produce food and it's actually been making people sick. In fact, most of the people that I see in my clinic and in my office are people who've been made sick because of food. I see kids who are wasted because they're not having enough food. I see kids who are stunted because they're not having enough nutritious foods. I see people who are ill because of foodborne disease. I see people who are affected by overweight and obesity and are suffering from cancers, from heart disease, from hypertension because of the food that they eat. And that's most of the people that I see. The food system was shocked. The food system hadn't realized this. And as you can see from the center of this figure here, the food system was sad and started to cry. <laughs> so the food system, who was a good old soul, said, I've got to do something about this. What am I wearing myself out for? I'm not resilient, I'm not sustainable, and I'm making people sick. What's the point? Why bother wearing myself out when I'm not even helping people be, be healthy? So the food system said to the doctor, who was wise, what should I do? And the, food and the doctor said, well, first of all, remember that the reason that you have become sick is because you fail to see yourself as a whole body, as a holistic body. You fail to see that the resources that you have are connected to the health of people. You fail to see that what is produced affects what is consumed. You fail to link environment and health and economy. You didn't think about all of these different parts of your body in a holistic way and together. So I advise you to think more holistically about the approach that you are taking. And the second piece of advice of the ha I have is that there are lots of people out there who can help you. There are lots of people out there who are trying to make change. There are lots of people in all parts of you who can help you. Go and gather them all together and work together for change. So the first toolbox is a food systems approach to decision making that puts the food system at the center and recognizes the food system as a system and recognizes that there are particular problems that need to be addressed and how to engage the whole of you, the whole of the system behind that while managing all of these different aspects of your body to move together in forward motion. And in so doing that, it's vital to include everybody. It's vital that everybody participates in this process and that everybody with a stake is involved. But those people will have different interests. They will have different incentives and they will have different solutions. So there's going to be conflict. There's going to be disagreement. There's going to be people pulling at your body in all kinds of different directions. And you need to acknowledge that in that discussion, people have different levels of power. And that's part of the reason that you're facing the problems that you face. So that needs to be acknowledged. Acknowledge and manage those power relations and conflict in part of that space of shared decision making. So the food system went off and started to do this. And the food system found that people came up with shared agendas. They found shared objectives. They found ways of working together. There was a lot of conflict, but there was a process of managing that all the way through. And the food system also found that they found particular actions that they could take where connections between these parts of the system were created, where co-benefits were found, where synergies were found, all the way from production to consumption. And you can see just a very small example of the tremendous amount of actions that were being taken and are being taken in order to make those connections for co-benefits and synergies, to align that food system towards health. Policies and actions that explicitly are designed to bring the different parts of the system 
together. Now, after this had been happening for a while, the food system felt a lot, lot better and went back to the doctor. And the doctor examined the food system and said, you know what, you're really getting a lot better in a lots of different parts, but it's a bit isolated. It's here and it's there and it's good here. It's not so good there. It's kind of like you're beginning to regenerate in different parts, but it's not quite the whole yet. And the food system said, well, maybe I need to wait a little longer. And the doctor said, well, how's your heart? How's your heart? And the food system said, well, you examine it. And the doctor examined the heart and said, no, there's something not quite right at the heart of your system yet. What do you think is really driving this problem? What is really at the core of the problem? So the food system thought and said, really is the problem? Why, am I, why are we still coming up against barriers? Why is it that people are still saying, well, I'm doing this, but there's all of these things that are trying to stop me and getting in the way. So the food system decided to go and talk to the people who were really in control of the food system, the big banks, the big corporations, the major governments of the world. And the food system realized that they had been benefiting all along from the way that the food system had been operating. They had been economically benefiting and the costs had been borne elsewhere for the food system being exhausted and worn out and for health. And so the food system said to these big powerful actors, look, why are, you, why are you putting all of these incentives and policies into place that are making me behave in a certain way? And these big act, powerful actors said, well, we're stuck too. Modern forms of capitalism aren't working for us either. So how can we make changes to unlock the core of the problem, which is that the incentives are all around moving in the direction of creating economic benefits for certain actors and creating profound inequalities rather than the solutions that we need. So the food system said, well, is this something we can do? And they said, yes, there's plenty we can do. So they started to put some of these actions to work. And you can see some of these actions that can be t uh, taken to start to change the art and reorient the wheels of the food system economy, financing, competition law, corporate governance, investor metrics, food environment regulations to level the playing field. There was plenty that could be put into place to st start to steer the food system's economy and completely re-incentivize the way that the economy worked because that was at the heart of the problem. So the food system really began to see some change because this unlocked the possibilities of all other kinds of changes that could then happen in the food system. But the food system realized there was also somebody that the food system hadn't yet spoken to. Spoken to a lot of people, involved a lot of people out there. And that was the people who eat. Because the food system realized that you can make changes in the economy, you can make changes in all kinds of different ways, but unless you involve the people who actually eat and understand their lived experience of food and why it is that they eat what they do and all of the many factors that shape what they eat, you weren't going to be able to change their ability to eat healthily and sustainably. So the food system started to speak to the people who eat all over the world and discover there were all kinds of reasons and all kinds of possibilities and opportunities to change things in order to help them eat more healthily and sustainable. There were actions that you could take to make people more financially secure. There were actions that you could take to reduce the relentless nature of food work. There were actions that you can take to improve household, food in, uh, 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 household and transportation infrastructure so people could prepare and eat food at home and cook. There were issues around social norms and networks, around gender 
um, which were preventing uh, healthy and sustainable diets. There were issues around access. There were issues around the enticements in the food environments that were diverting people in the wrong direction. There it were issues of trust. There were issues around things like racism and marginalized communities. And the food system started to have this, to say, why aren't you trusting the mess? Why aren't you having trust in the messengers of this healthy and sustainable diets message? Where is the trust breaking down and how can we build it? How can we create meaning through food? How can we make sure that healthy, sustainable food has meaning in your life, has status, has value, that people believe in it? And how can we make sure that you like it? And wow, there were so many different actions that can be taken to make this happen. And people rolled up their sleeves. They understood their role. They took their responsibility. And they made all of these changes. And the food system really began to get a lot better. And went back to the doctor and said to the doctor, I'm almost better. The doctor was shocked because the doctor happened to know that we'd been trying to take all of these actions for years. People went to summits. They went to conferences. They did research. They said all kinds of good things, but things didn't really happen. So the doctor said, what was the magic ingredient? What really made this change happen? meant that people really started to act and take their roles and act their responsibilities and do things for collective impact. And the food system thought for a moment and said, well, I did happen to notice there was lots of women in charge. <laughs> the food system said, I also noticed that lots of other marginalized groups and minoritized groups were in charge. They were making decisions. And what was really interesting was that, that the way that were they and all of the others that were involved were making decisions in particular ways. They prioritized social purpose over things that matter less to people. They were utterly committed to what they were doing. They persisted in their commitments, but they made mistakes. But they learned from those mistakes. They were happy to talk and be open about those mistakes, and they adapted from them. They were happy to stand up and be courageous in deviating from the norm with ambition. They didn't spend time pushing themselves forward. They were about lifting others up, particularly those who were marginalized, but listening to the unheard voices and listening with curiosity to the people that they disagreed with. They reflected individually and collectively on what they could do. And they connected with those who they really felt they could work with for collective action. And in so doing, they communicated with each other openly and authentically. In other words, said the food system, leadership. That was the magic ingredient, leadership. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you. <laughs>